Hi, good morning. So I have one of these um, interesting sort of relationship stories. This might be a long one. And I'm doing laundry, so pardon the sound of the washing machine in the background. So anyway, um, right after 9-11, uh, around that time, I started doing volunteer work with an international service organization would not uh, name I won't name them though but you know there's only a few of them around so anyway when I was doing this I met another woman who also was volunteering for the same um, service organization and she was a bit older than me I would say about 15, 16 years older than me, and she was like an early retiree, and I was still raising my kids. Um, but we struck up a good friendship, um, and um, she was very helpful. My kids loved her. Um, anyway, she shared her story with me. She had quite an unusual story. Um, she was originally from the Midwest. She was the oldest of eight children. And when her father was in his late 30s, um, she was an older teenager. I think her youngest sibling was like an infant or a toddler because there were eight of them. And they were, you know, a Midwest, a loving, conservative, sort of, uh, yeah, Christian family. The father died of a heart attack, and she was there. She saw the whole thing. And the mother was left widowed with eight children 16 through infancy okay that's the age range and she said um, the mother got you know social security benefit and was able to raise the kids and when they were older when the youngest one was old enough I think the mother might have gone to work or whatever and so she became like because she was the oldest of eight children, she became like the matriarch, you know, next in line to her mother and was like a second mother to all of her siblings. So that's her background. So she saw what happened to her mother and she knew um, that she didn't want to um, be put in that position ever, like if it ever happened to her as an adult. So she made education a priority and uh, I don't know if anyone listening is familiar with Gallaudet University. That's a very renowned university for the deaf or also interpret. You, you can learn um, to be an interpreter for the deaf. So she ended up going to Gallaudet University and uh, learned sign language, even though she was hearing and, you know, her, her articulation was excellent. And... Um, because of that, there, there weren't many people that I guess were, you know, people that could speak and hear that also knew sign language and could interpret. So she also uh, majored in special ed and worked with children that were deaf or had hearing impairments in school. And so she always made an excellent salary and had great benefits and everything and was able to retire young. And okay, that's her educational and professional background. But um, as far as personal, so um, while she was going to university, you know, she knew she wanted to get married and have a family and everything. And um, she met someone and he had, he was a little older than her and he had been married and divorced. And so they got married and um, she, you know, she wanted to have children. I think they had their first child within like a year or two of marriage. Well, what happened, she found out after she was married and had the child that he had not yet divorced his first wife, so it was considered a bigamous marriage. So um, to straighten everything out, he did have to complete the divorce and then I guess like remarry the second wife, and then they had a second child. And um, I, for some reason, I think that she was like more of the main breadwinner than he was like he had a job but like she made the big bucks so therefore um she would like hire a babysitter or put them in daycare or use babysitters so that you know she could go out and earn her big bucks as a special ed you know teacher of the deaf right and um 
at this point, I don't know if they were living in the Midwest or in New York. Let's just say that when she lived in New York, initially she was in Westchester County. So anyway, you know, she thought she was happily married with two very young, like, you know, a toddler, two toddlers. They were close in age. And she discovered that her husband um, had uh, a relationship inappropriate with an underage babysitter of theirs. So she was devastated, and I guess she went for a divorce. And he immediately remarried someone that didn't know, like, what a creep he was. And she wanted to continue working. She loved her kids. And she wanted to spend as much time with them as possible. And the creepy ex-husband married a very lovely woman. I actually met them. That's another story. So um, she thought, well, this woman already has kids. I think they had a child together, the creepy ex-husband and the third wife. And she was a stay-home mom, and she felt that it would be better for her sons, rather than her having custody and having to get babysitters, to let them live with their father and their stepmother. There would be other siblings around, and she was a stay-at-home mom, and she would just have as much time with them, you know, nights and weekends and holidays and vacations, and have a lot of quality time with them that way. So that, that was their arrangement, and I guess there was no child support on either end or whatever. And, you know, she grew up in a, um, you know, a very Christian household, very spiritual, not wholly rollerish or legalistic, just happy, because I've met her family, you know, very briefly, but at a couple of, you know, um, like one time I was at an engagement party for one of her sons, and... Uh, one time I went to her house on a holiday, and I met, you know, most of her family. Um, actually, some of her siblings became ministers in the South, um, and they're doing very well. So anyway, but that's, I'm going off on a tangent. So anyway, um, she told me that when all of this first happened, and now she moved to New York, she was devastated and heartbroken and she felt that she was acting up by like dating tons of men and getting involved with them and she said that she had been attracted to dark-skinned men like black men and maybe Native American so she started dating exclusively black men and um, one of them was abusive and it was really a bad situation and she broke up with him had to get like an order of protection I think he went to jail whatever and um, she realized at this point that her life was out of control and um, she went and got, you know, professional help. I guess she was still grieving the marriage, you know. If I told you all the details, we'd be here all day. I'm trying to make this like a synopsis. So anyway, um, the area where she lived in Westchester County, she rented a really nice apartment with like a fireplace in the living room that was in a Victorian house. It was like, I guess the family that owned the house had like the first or the first and the second floor and she had like the top floor. It was like a one bedroom, whatever. And so um, on the weekend when she was trying to get out of this pattern of getting involved with the wrong men, she started volunteering at a local homeless shelter um, near where she lived and she was offering to do classes on sign language because I think there might have been a couple of deaf people at this homeless shelter so she was also doing interpretation work for them free like you know on her her free time um, so when she was there she met a man who was also, I don't know if he was working there or volunteering or what. He was a black man, and she was very attracted to him, you know, spiritually, because he had gone through a lot. He was actually um, a Vietnam vet that had post-traumatic stress disorder, and I believe he was homeless at one time. I don't know if he was homeless when they met or if he was living at the shelter. I don't know the exact. I never really pressed her for details. So anyway, um, they were together a lot because of the volunteering, and they got close. They were spending time, and she said she initially pursued him, and at first he was resistant, and then finally he said to her, I, I, I care about you, and, and I don't want to see you getting hurt. You know, he knew her whole story. I guess they were friends first, and then he said, I, I just have a, 
you know, he said, I need to really think this through. He said, I'm a black man, you know, with a history. And, you know, I've gotten my life together. And, you know, I want to keep it together. And he said, and, you know, if, if I married you, because I guess he thought it was going to be all or nothing. He said, if I married you, I'm taking on a white woman from a conservative Midwest family that has two very young children. And that's a lot to take on. And they decided anyway, I guess it was meant to be. And I, she showed me a wedding picture. They got married in her apartment, standing in front of the fireplace. It was a nice picture she showed me of when they got married. And they had a lot of common things. They liked to go on cruises. She's the one that got me started on cruising. And um, when they got older and they had some discretionary income, they liked to go to casinos and gamble and everything. They And, and they liked family and they liked their home. Eventually, or not, I guess not too long after they got married, they moved further north up into the town that I live in and they bought a townhouse. Um... And, and so anyway, and she was working for the school district and then um, retired early because she was able to and did a lot of volunteer work and was involved with her church. And that's how I met her. And um, she really tried to help me because she saw that I was also, you know, she identified with me that I was a single mom. I was raising two sons and, you know, um, I didn't have the same background or past as she had. I think I was a little more careful. I'm not judging her, you know, and I wasn't as deeply hurt, I think, by my marital breakup as she was. But anyway, um, I I'm going all over the place with this story. Um, I was talking to a female friend of mine, and I'm going to ask her to listen to this the other day. And we, you know, women like to talk about relationship talk. And so we were talking about, you know, a certain situation and everything. And I had told her this story. And I had said, you know, if you were looking at it from the outside or, or on paper, you would say, here it is. There's this conservative white woman from the Midwest with this and that. And she marries this guy that was a homeless Vietnam vet that also happened to be African-American. You know, coming from a different culture and background and blah, 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 but it worked for them, it, it worked, you know, and um, I believe when they first got married, or right before they got married, he moved into her apartment, and he said, no, we need to get married, you have two small children, and I don't think it's right that, like, I'm just living here, and you have two small children that are coming and visiting, and, you know, their mother's living with someone, like, no, 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 he respected her, and he married her, but I mean, you know, she was a lot younger, the kids were little, you know, so I was telling my friend the story, and, you know, we were talking about how, um, you know, how hard it is sometimes when you have, um, like a second marriage when you're older, or a third marriage, or whatever, <laughs> you know, that when you've got one person that owns a home and one person's a renter, it's a lot easier when you have two people that each own their own house. It could be difficult because who gives up their home? Do both of them give up their home and get like a mutual home? You know, like what do they do? It's really stressful. And I can say that from my own experience. And so my friend, before I told her the story, said it's almost like it's better if with a couple if one has a home, owns a home, and the other one is a renter, because, you know, th there's one less obstacle there. So, um, you know, and I hadn't thought of this story for a long time until I was talking with my friend the other day, and I thought it was quite interesting. And actually, this lady that I'm talking about, uh, we'll just call her the uh, interpreter of the deaf, uh, there's many more uh, stories that are quite interesting, um, based on my friendship with her, um, that maybe I'll do future stories. It's like a positive relationship that I had, and the only reason we drifted apart was her husband was working. He became well-established. You know, after he had that steady home environment, he, um, he took um, college courses, he got a degree, and he was gainfully employed for many years, and he used to work every other weekend. He was a... Um, 
a healthcare professional, and he was on call every other weekend. Well, he was working in a, in a place, a facility, every other weekend. And the weekends that he was at work were the weekends that I didn't have my children. So her and I, we would make plans for the weekends. Like, well, he's at work this weekend, and you don't have the kids, so let's go to the Renaissance Fair, or let's do this, and let's do that. And um, so we spent a lot of time together, and it worked out. But uh, the friendship kind of got more distant with um she she was older than me and also when her husband finally retired her whole you know structure of her life changed and then she became a grandmother and so now you know it's just things change in people's lives the situation changes and the friendship just sort of shifts sometimes in a serious way but there's no animosity or ill will or anything like that but I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting story, and I just kind of glossed over, but like, I don't want to start crying, I guess I get, still get emotional, but I remember like when she told me like about like her marriage and things like that, and when she first got divorced, like the hurt and, and all of what she went through, and she said that like she used to pray and that, like, when she met her husband, it was, like, a miracle. Even though, like I said, on the outside looking in, they would say, like, well, what's this? It's kind of an odd situation. But that, like, it turned out to be a blessing for both of them, you know. But, like, a lot of... This woman was very heartfelt. She shared a lot of her personal feelings and experiences and thoughts. And she really, really tried to help me. She saw what I was going through. And I'm very grateful. And um, it's kind of scary because she is older than me. And um, I remember thinking, I know how upset she would be if I had died before her. And I did reach out to her peripherally um, in the last couple of months because I didn't want her. I was afraid she was going to find out from like a stranger or an obituary that I had passed away. And now it turns out that it looks like I'm not, not in the near future, I'm not gonna die, knock on wood. But I'm, I'm glad that like I reached out to her and I don't even think she's aware of what was going on with me. She just thinks that like I'm back in New York and she doesn't really know all the details. But I just thought she had an interesting story. It's almost tick flick type story. But there's like a lot more many stories um, of experiences that she had and then that we had together. Um, we also for a while there attended the same church. And that church ended up being so dysfunctional that we both left and went to different churches. So anyway, everyone, um, most of everyone... Have a great day. Bye.